What is going on you guys? It's Avery here bringing you guys a little bit of a different deck today and today what we're going to be talking about is Chainburn. <laughs> I can already see the dislikes going now. Um, I know, I know, but this is really something that I wanted to cover um, just because of the fact that Chainburn is a very good budget deck right now. The fact that it's Zodiac matchup is fairly easy. Um, if you watched my live stream from last night, you will know that I tested it a little bit, just kind of mess around because I couldn't get a win to save my life. I was so tired. <laughs> um, but uh, I had some difficulty with Gamma Seal because Gamma Seal, you can detach two kaiju counters from anywhere on the field to negate an effect and you can do it in the same chain so like what happened last night on stream was I went battle fader he chained uh, Gamma Seal's effect, removed two kaiju counters from Kyoto I chained to a scarecrow, he removed two counters and then I had to chain my third scarecrow so other than that it was a, it was a, um, what was it, kaiju, it was a great old kaiju so other than that matchup, I mean really this deck is super good you know it's zodiac matchup is a joke, I mean like it just blows it out of the water. I mean, the only thing that they can really do is make Totem Bird to stop one card. And then, like, when I was first playtesting Chamber against Zoo, the guy had three Whiptails in hand, so he equipped all three to, uh, what do you call it, Dryden. And then he was able to take 600 less damage from um, the Secret Barrel, which that can also mess you up in a way because of the fact that if they go Whiptail to Whiptail, granted, player priority would pass back to you before they could chain the second Whiptail. It can mess up your chains because if there's two cards with the same name, in the same chain, then you can't use like chain strike and accumulate fortune. But there are cute ways to get around that, which I'm going to be talking about in this video. Now, just to give some backstory, these sleeves have been used all to hell. Let me see if I can get that glare on it just right. This one is so used we can kind of see it in the corner where my finger, my thumb is right there. These sleeves have been used for like five, six years straight. And this is my dad's deck. He's been playing Chamberin for five, six years straight. I played it on and off. I've gotten a couple decent records at uh, regionals and stuff with it, um, but other than that, I haven't topped. My dad's gotten his invite twice in the same season to Nats with this deck, and of course he's made changes and stuff as time has gone by, um, and I'll be talking about, you know, choices in the deck and stuff like that, but without any further ado, let's go ahead and get straight into this deck profile. So, we've got three card card D, uh, pretty standard. We do have, I do have secret rares. But uh, they're just not in this deck because I stole them from my dad at some point. So sorry, dad. We got two lava golems. This card's MVP. It's so busted. Um, it's like a monarch, really. So shit. All right, we're good. Two battle fader and two Sith scarecrow. Um, card is good, you know. Um, what can I say? It's it's a battle stopper. <laughs> and then we got one one day of peace. To start off our spells. Not a lot of monsters, you know, you don't really need a lot of monsters. What comes in the power is the trap cards. Then we got three pot of duality, as I can't place them on the table. Then we got two chain strike. Um, chain strike is chain strike. Um, we're going to come back to this because there's a cute little interaction you can do with chain strike and accumulated fortune. Because chain strike and accumulated fortune both say that you cannot activate this card if two cards with the same name are in the same chain. So I'm going to put this to the side because we're going to get back to it. Then for the trap cards, we got two Dimension Wall. Ruling on this, because I know people ask this all the time, Dimension Wall does not target an opponent's monster. It targets the player's life points. This is one of the very few cards, I think the only card in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! that actually targets the player's life points because you're taking the damage instead of me. So let's say you have a Dryden on board with 4,000 and you attack and I activate D-Wall, it doesn't negate your attack or anything. All it does is have you take the damage instead. So your attack was never negated or it didn't go through. It still went It still went through, but you took the damage instead. So, you know, it targets the life points is essentially how it's ruled. Then we got two Just Desserts. It's busted. Um, Cease Fire is like another Just Desserts, but just hits effect monsters. Um, you can switch this out for a third Just Desserts. It's really all what you want to do. If you're playing against Shadals, you can just flip up all their cards and no flip effects are activated to take damage. And to go with our um, Just Desserts, we have two Ajama Trios. I'm really hoping that with the new Link Summoning mechanic, this is ruled that the player that activates this card gets to select which zones are taken up because, you know, you could take up three specific extra monster zones. Um, or, um, excuse me, main monster zones, and then uh, your opponent may not be able to, you know, play any monsters from their extra deck into the main monster zone, if that's how it's ruled, so we'll just have to wait and see on that. Then we've got three Secret Barrel, um, pretty standard is Secret Barrel, very good card, um, and then we've got two Blazing Mirror Force, um, 
my dad's been back and forth on this card because sometimes you can lose the duel uh, to yourself with it. I know at one point he was playing one Blazing Mirror Force and two Ceasefire. Um, you could also swap this out for, for other burn cards like, you know, say Secret Blast. Um, he was also playing a Kazaki Self Destruct Button burn build. And what Kazaki Self Destruct Button does is that while it's set on the field, let's say you Twin Twister it and you pop it, Kazaki Self Destruct Button automatically does a thousand damage when it's sent to the graveyard. So it would kind of, you know, make your opponent weary of wanting to pop your back row, especially if they're low on life. But it still does what it needs to do. Um, not too good in the zoo matchup because, of course, the original attack of the zoo exceeds is unknown, so it's zero. So just kind of something to keep in mind there. And then we've got three Accumulated Fortune. I'm going to put one to the side because we're going to talk about Chain Strike and Accumulated Fortune together in just a second. And then still moving on with the draw engine, we've got three Reckless Greed. Everyone tries to cheat me and say that this stacks. Like, if you activate three Reckless Greeds, that means you can't draw for six turns. Come on, quit trying to cheat, buddy. And we got two Legacy of Yadagrasu, one Jar of Greed, and then we've got double Wabaku and double Threatening Roar for our stall. A lot of people like to play Card of Demise and um, Pot of Desires. I think that those cards, well, Desires at least, is garbage in this deck because you need all of your resources. You know, you play Desires in this and you banish 10 cards off the top of your deck and you banish a bunch of draw cards and all that. For one thing, now you're low on cards in your deck. Second of all, you need all the cards that you can draw. And third of all, you don't want to banish anything because you can never get it back. You know, you only run two Swiss Scarecrow and two Battle Fair. If you banish all four of those from a Desires, you're screwed because you have no uh, Battle Stoppers in your hand. So, you know, that's that's that. But, uh, Card uh, car Demise. Almost said Card of Desires. Card of Demise. Um, I'm going to say that it's eh. It's eh in Chamber. Because it really all depends. My dad's played it before. He's played it in threes and twos and ones. He said it's been okay at one. And at the same time, like, you know, you might lose your whole hand, and it's just, it's just not worth playing. It's really not. Now, to talk about Chain Strike and Accumulate Fortune. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, both of these cards have the effect of, if there's two cards with the same name and the same chain link, then you can't activate these cards. But, what you can do to circumvent this, let's say that, um... You have two accumulated fortune set, and people try to cheat you. Well, or excuse me, people will try to cheat you on this all the time. Let's say that you've got like I don't know a back row of four. Like let's say you got a threatening roar and chain strike. This is a horrible set, but you know what I mean. Let's say your opponent activates I don't know twin twisters and targets the two accumulated fortunes. So that would be chain link one. You activate the threatening roar. That's going to be chain link two. You activate the chain strike. That's chain link three. You activate the accumulated fortune, or excuse me, I'm sorry, I did that terribly wrong. This has to be activated on chain link four or higher, so you would need like another set card, like I don't know, a Wabaku or something. Point is, once you hit chain link four, this can be activated on chain link four or higher. You can't activate cards with the same name and the same chain. However, you can activate a second accumulated fortune because let's say that this is your setup right now, right? And you've got you've got these three face-up cards in your chain so far. You can still activate a second accumulated fortune in this same chain. And you might say, well, Avery, you can't because now you've got two cards with the same name in the same chain. You're right. However, in order to activate the second accumulated fortune, you have to make sure you have no cards with the same name in the chain. Currently, you don't. If you meet the requirements to play accumulated fortune, you can play a second one because you're right now at two cards with the same name in the same chain but you've already activated it so it essentially bypasses you uh, not being able to activate a card with the same name now could you activate a 30 accumulated fortune no because you have now both players now recognize that there are two cards with the same name in the same chain on the field I also cannot activate a second chain strike because there's already two accumulated fortunes in the same chain if there was one chain strike in uh, the chain link, I could activate a second chain strike. Same ruling as accumulated fortune. So, just something I wanted to throw out there. I know it's kind of a long explanation, but I wanted to be sure that everybody understands that because I always explain that whenever I do a chamber and deck profile because this is not my first chamber and deck profile. Um, and people always try to cheat me on that at locals, regionals, etc. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like, favorite rating. Um, please, you know, share this around, you know. I really don't want to see Chamber at my regionals, but it's probably bound to happen. Um, I'm sorry about the deck profile being so long. There's going to be more videos tonight, probably. Um, 
and let me know what you guys think about Chamber in the comments. I feel like I'm already getting a bunch of dislikes at this point. But if you stuck all the way to the end, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So thank you guys for watching as always, and subscribe if you have not already.